everyone, welcome back to Happy Chirp. This is my second episode, but the first one with a guest here. And today I have with me um, a friend of mine, actually. We went to school together and um, we did O-Levels together. And um, now uh, I would like to introduce you to her. This is Fatma Hussain. Hi, Fatma. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Um, first, I would like to ask you, uh, what do you do so that people can get to know you a little bit? So I'm a psychotherapist. I have a master's in counseling and psychotherapy. Um, I trained in, I don't know if they want to know this, but person-centered and psychodynamic counseling, which is uh, two different modalities. Okay. And I have a private practice here in, Pak- in Islamabad. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been working here since, I think, 2019. 2019 mm-hmm. is when I started working here. And, uh, yeah, so that's what I do. I have a private practice. I do a bunch of other stuff on the side, um, things that I'm passionate about. Okay, what are those? So, uh, these days, for example, I'm working with this uh, organization. They've received a big grant, um, and they're working on making the f- some of the first trauma-informed schools in Pakistan. Oh. So, yeah, I designed the training for teachers, Kecha Corporal Punishment, Kijaga. These are alternative teaching strategies. Here are some listening skills you can use. So the more trauma you can mitigate in the school setting and environment, the better for children's mental health. Okay, so um, so these are like schools or these... I, I don't know what these are, actually. So The training is something we've designed, and then we pitch it to different schools. The pilot was in five low-cost private schools in Islamabad, in Pin Pagwal, which is a little outside of Islamabad. Um, and that went really well. So now they're scaling it up and working with the KP government and probably the Punjab government. Okay. So I think this is... This is like the first time this is happening, or is it like this before? Yes, se? no, this is, this is definitely the first time. This is it's happening. very interesting. Yeah. Um, so, um, I wanted to keep this conversation very candid. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wanted to sort of dive deeper for the listeners mm-hmm. into what it's like to be a psychotherapist Mm -hmm. but like for it to understand that first I want to sort of ask you um how you ended up becoming one Mm -hmm. um maybe you can share a little bit of like your uh backstory Mm -hmm. or why you became one Mm -hmm. and then we can further talk about the profession the short answer is completely by accident okay (laughs) (laughs) but But we want more (laughs) (laughs) but I suppose there are no accidents and on some level I would say that it was like for most therapists um, a way to heal myself Hmm. so what happened was that we did our role levels together and then I went to a different school Hmm. and I picked the most bizarre level combination which was psychology English Mm -hmm. literature and media studies and why did you I didn't really think it through. It was just like, I was like, oh, bahut edgy, you know, uh, uh, hongi, uh, kar leti um, but I, I understand why you chose English literature. Yeah, though. You I, were always good and sort of into I, and that. I enjoyed it. And I was like, uh, this is something I want to do. Uh, uh, but it wasn't, I wasn't actually thinking ahead like I should have been, ke, how is this going to look on cal- college applications, on, you know, what, is, what does it mean for me career-wise? Mm. So I don't know if I would do it differently now, but that's how it went. Mm. Um, a levels were terrible for me. Like I think it was the transition to a new school. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a much bigger school. We went to a very sheltered, small school where everybody was friends with everybody. Yeah, our school was like in a house, chota <laughs> sa, <laughs> and like you know, three four kamre the, aur unhe me ham padte the, and then she went to this huge campus yes, with like eight hundred students. Yeah. Um, and all of these, most of these people had known each other pehle se, uh, and no, and my subject combination was so different that I was never in the same group with this like you know it didn't fit into any of those categories so my whole mm. classic different group ke saath leti thi. Mm. so uh, that happened and then I thought I wanted to do anthropology okay and then I didn't get into lumps I was waitlisted and it, at you know at the very end I got uh, rejection which was mm. devastating for me oh. because I was very sure ke mera to, matlab kya? Ho <laughs> You were always a good student, though. I remember this. Yeah, I had huh. like I had really decent grades yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I don't know what happened. I think it was the LCAT for then. I think mm. exam. Mm. Um, oh, and I've never been good at standardized tests, so. <clears throat> but I was devastated. Mm. 
Um, and then I decided to go to BNU for my undergrad because my mom was really adamant that I got into Nasti here, but I didn't want to go. I was like, Islamabad and I went to Islamabad. But my mother was really adamant that I should have a hostel experience. Yes, because she had had learning one. Hoti hai. Like, <laughs> when I was hostel, I was like, I should have a hostel. So she was like, whatever it is, just go. Because she, she really enjoyed her experience. She said it taught me a lot about living with people, about people. So do it. Um, so I... BNU, there were two programs I was looking at. One was the, I don't know, one of the design programs. Um, and one, and the other one was their psychology program. Mm. So I was like, huh, this sounds more up my alley. Let's do it. Didn't think it through. Didn't kind of think eh, what this looks like career-wise for me. And then I, was, I realized I was really good at it. And I was doing really well in classes. That could also just be because it was BNU. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I was doing really well. Uh, I, and it, was, it came very effortlessly to me. So my undergrad was four years of applied psychology. So my degree okay. is BSc, Honors Applied Psychology. And then when I graduated, most people usually go the clinical psychology route mm -hmm. or they go the organizational psychology route. But for me, what was really pivotal was uh, part of my degree, its a component was a hospital internship. Thi. Okay. Um, it was, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a two-month thing that you had to do in the hospital where you shadowed the psychologists there. And I was given services hospital. Lahore. Oh, okay. That's a tough place yeah. to be in. Huh? It, and it really opened my eyes. And I was like, I don't think this model works. I don't think that, you know, I saw the way people were treated. There was no empathy. There was, was no, there was no, like, they weren't treated as humans. And for me, it was just very jarring to watch that happen. And I recognized that resources come out, psychologists are stretched thin, all of those things. But that just didn't sit very well with me. Mm. <clears throat> so I decided I want to do counseling. Mm. And I applied to a bunch of programs that felt like they were more relevant. But everybody was like, you know, counseling, this is one of my teachers at university. Yeah. So it was a lot of like, so, see, see, that's the thing. Like, therapy ko log yeah. like, you know? Matab Absolutely. And uh. it was. Um, and thankfully, my parents were really supportive. They were like, you know, you decide what you want to do and, mm. and we'll support that. Mm. So I applied to a couple of programs in Canada and and UK, I just did one Edinburgh. Mm. And I just stumbled upon it by chance again, complete accident, a week before the deadlines closed. Um, and I got in. Mm. And, That's uh, where you ended up going. Yeah, so I ended up going to Edinburgh. It was a two-year full-time program. Mm. I loved it. It was a great city to live in. I enjoyed it. But it was also very developmental. So for those who don't know, and I'm sure most people don't, but counseling training mostly is very focused on personal development. Okay. So the idea is that until you don't have awareness of your own wounds, your oh. own, the way you respond to different things, you can't help people. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Because if you're listening to someone else, then you have to your experiences and your wounds mm -hmm ko obviously project kar sakte ho, right yeah. and bias bhi ho sakta hai and Absolutely. judgment based on your experience ho sakta hai. so i think it's very important that makes sense mm -hmm. to be very aware like self aware enough to maybe not let not just that but also like okay i'm responding to this person in a particular way is this mm. something from my personal history yeah. is there something this person's eliciting in me yes um, but also i think it's really important to have that experience of being on the other side of the couch right like um, so I, I started personal therapy also mm. and I have been in it ever since. Okay. So I've been, you know, in therapy since. So you're a therapist and you're in therapy also. Yeah, and, and in the UK, in UK, that's good practice. Like, it, you know, I would never refer clients to somebody who's never been in personal therapy. Uh, so it's, it's definitely a prerequisite. Because you can help people if you don't know. And, if, and even the assumption that, you know, therapists are all sorted or they've got it all figured out. That's also really problematic because sometimes it's really important for clients to know that you're you're just as imperfect as them. Yes, you can't like dehumanize them. No, yeah. and, and you can't dehumanize yourself. Yeah, so that's uh, that's important. Mm. Um, and I truly believe that. Okay, जब तक आप खुद अपने आप को vulnerable नहीं करते, आप vulnerability hold नहीं कर सकते. And I think like. To be honest, like if I have a therapist and I'm going into therapy, mm -hmm. if I'm going to 
like obviously i would want my therapist to be completely non judgmental like that you said you <laughs> are non judgmental for a living that's what you do but obviously like if i feel that's one aspect but if i feel like uh, my therapist is not human enough mm. then how is that person supposed to heal me yes right uh, and that's true and it's very different from a doctor patient relationship it's not yeah. like wo power difference wo hona hi nahi chahiye ah. of course there's power in the room and it plays out in different ways mm. but the therapist is not an expert telling you what to do they're helping you find they your own way they figure it out it's like ha um, they're not like solving your problems for you they're sort of helping you solve your own problems yeah. right like so the therapist's way. job is basically to redirect you to your own experience so well, you you spoke about vulnerabilities as well right so um it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable and you find like as a as just as a human i find it easier to be vulnerable mm-hmm. with somebody who is also vulnerable mm-hmm. with me yeah because you feel like more connected right yeah. if the other person se- feels like a wall yeah to aap vulnerable nahi ho sakte ha mm-hmm. huh. and 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 i think that it's a very tricky and difficult thing to navigate because you don't want to make therapy about yourself either yeah, right like you don't yeah. want to be like a bed ke meri baatein suno <laughs> um and so self disclosure has to be used very carefully mm-hmm. but i think there's so many other ways of being vulnerable like for example i'm thinking of a of a client that i worked with who had had an unexpected bereavement mm-hmm. um and they just couldn't cry about it and i just sat there and i cried like because that was my natural response in that moment uh-huh. and i think i needed to do that in that moment for them to be able to get in touch with something they couldn't feel mm-hmm. and so i was picking up on and responding to mm-hmm. and feeling for them essentially that's that's what a therapist in trained in the way that i am mm-hmm. not all therapists mm-hmm. um would do they would help people metabolize their feelings mm-hmm. yeah so um empathy like is a huge part yeah. of this yeah so um how difficult it is it mm-hmm. to be non-judgmental mm-hmm. to not get triggered mm-hmm. because i mean i know that a lot of things mm-hmm. would trigger me mm-hmm. or like get in my head mm-hmm. and how do you sort of like zone out mm-hmm. to live a normal life mm-hmm. after all that loads mm-hmm. that people sort of dump on you because mm-hmm. I mean that's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then that's that's what what we're there for also. Like yes. um and I think that's a really good question. I don't think people um ask about this or there's a I've lot of I've discuss- always wondered. Ki kitni mushkil life hai. Matlab mujhe isna lagta hai as a therapist. So how do you like a be not judgmental? Mm-hmm. Um and b not get triggered mm-hmm. and c like live a normal life or like go back to normal life after all that is unloaded on you mm-hmm. so so i think that to answer your first question how do i be non judgmental <clears throat> i think that's part of the training uh-huh. right that's part of learning ki acha agar koi jhoot bhi bol raha hai for example ya koi act out kar raha hai ya abuse kar raha hai jo bhi it's coming from a place of pain hmm. it's coming from a place of hurt hmm. so something in them is making them act out in that way. Hmm. And it's usually, you know, something deeply painful that they're actually disconnected from. Hmm. Um so it's for me it's um that that bit hasn't been a problem. Um and you are able to like separate. Are you able to understand ke uh, Yeah, I I think the the best way to put it would be I'm able to look at people as a whole most of the time. Mm. You know, yeah. not just as as a uh just as their at their actions. Hmm. there's more to them yeah, yeah. Mm. and and there's more to their story there's mm. more to their experience mm. uh which can be kind of problematic also because it's you know there's this really popular meme that as a psychologist i can't even get angry at anybody because i know the reason for doing it <laughs> so so i there's this truth to that mm. and i think ke mere liye um that's been confusing like you know things that it would that would enrage people um don't enrage you enough yeah not in the same way not in the same um, way like you can understand that they're wrong but then yeah yeah i get it yeah ha, ha, ha. so it's it's hard um but it is an occupational hazard like like with the other stuff you know like people coming in and it does have an emotional impact when people are coming in and talking about really you're sitting with the worst aspects of human existence the the most painful bits mm-hmm. you're left with that they leave the room they dump it you're you're left with that mm. um so that's definitely hard to manage and uske liye again personal therapies is a is a place supervision is something i uh, i do which is 
अच्छा विच इज़ हैविंग अ क्लिनिकल सुपरवाइजर मीन्स दैट यू टॉक अबाउट योर क्लाइंट्स विद समबडी हुज़ मोर एक्सपीरियंसड हैज़ सुपरविजन ट्रेनिंग एंड दे हेल्प यू सी थिंग्स दैट यू माइट हैव मिसड और यू नो मूव फॉरवर्ड समथिंग दैट यू कॉन्ट फिगर आउट सो आई सी माई सुपरवाइजर क्वाइट रेगुलरली एंड पर्सनल थेरेपी ऑल्सो एक्सरसाइजिंग uh you know just and kind of being in touch with your own responses to things mm. um learning to take a break when you need to that's something i still need to work on mm. i'm really bad at that mm. um so it is it is ma- difficult to manage but i think it also says something ab- a friend of mine and i were talking about it the other day it also says something about us that we've picked a career where you know we allow, we tell people come in and use us and then leave and the better we do our job the faster they want to leave us so mm. and the relationship starts with knowing ke शुरू होगी तो ख़त्म भी होगी बट आई हैव हैड अ लॉट ऑफ लॉन्ग टर्म क्लाइंट्स इट्स वेरी फुलफिलिंग वर्क बट आई ऑल्सो थिंक दैट येस इट्स एन ऑक्यूपेशनल हैज इट बट आई एम ऑल्सो रियली ऑनर्ड दैट पीपल कम इन एंड शेयर यू नो लाइक फॉर मी समटाइम्स लाइक आई कॉन्ट बिलीव आई डू दिस यू नो मस्ट बी रिवॉर्डिंग इट इज इट इज रिवॉर्डिंग बट इट्स ऑल्सो लाइक बींग अलाउड इन टू दोज बिट्स ऑफ पीपल्स लाइफ इट्स इट्स ट्रूली एन ऑनर इट्स लाइक आई थिंक you realize how much people trust you yeah. that's an honor yeah uh-huh. and uh, also how much people can how much difference just talking about it or having somebody respond in an empathic non-judgmental way to their deeper secrets can can be mm. so, yeah so um uh, does it affect you the things people say mm, yes um uh, they do uh i mean you shared the fact that you were crying in like yeah. one of the sessions and and that's not necessarily a problematic thing i think that's part of the process also mm-hmm. and yes i'm affected by my clients i think you can't help somebody till you're affected by them okay that have sense. to be moved by by somebody to really like if their pain is that alive it you need to feel it mm-hmm. and if you're not feeling it then i would wonder about what's happening in the therapeutic relationship what an interesting job to like be there to feel someone's pain mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you need like a whole new level of like empathy and everything it's kind of amazing it is yeah and like i the reason i wanted to have this conversation was because i feel like not enough people look at this profession like that mm-hmm. i mean they see therapists as i don't know like look at them like dari lagta hai therapist se baat karte ki wo kya sorry about this ki wo pata nahi kya pehchan jayenge kya samajh jayenge ye wo hoga um but yeah at the end of the day like this is their job mm-hmm. you know and to understand people yeah and yeah. it comes from a non judgmental place yeah exactly it's not judgmental yeah. so it's okay yes haan ji so um i think we were in the middle of your story yes yes so going back to that so i then did my masters mm. just just which was a really uh eye opening experience mm. personally but also professionally because wo cheeze na hame kabhi pakistan mein padhate hain us tarah uh i had one counseling course in my undergrad mm. uh which meant i couldn't actually apply to a lot of masters programs because they said that just wasn't oh. enough oh. counseling credits oh um and so this is very different from the way clinical psychologists work and mm. there is you know just general animosity between okay uh, the professions okay. because they're very clinical in the sense that this is the dsm Uh, this is dsm matlab like is the diagnostic, diagnostic and haa, statistical manual yeah, thought so like sorry i assume that everybody knows <laughs> what the no, dsm is but like i thought you meant diagnosis yeah haa, yeah haa. so so wo they'll be like acha ye 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 symptoms hain it's a very flat out yeah. ye diagnosis ye symptoms ye treatment yeah. okay and and in those when you're working as a clinical psychologist you also don't need to bring yourself into the relationship it's very much like you're the client I am the expert I'm going to tell you this is wrong with you. So basically it's this is more like a doctor patient relationship. Yeah it's it's closer to that. Yes. Yes. Mm. It shouldn't be but it is usually because yahan pe zyada the training CBT hoti hai which is cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm. Uh I'm not a big fan. Yeah uh, I think you once told me like I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like okay. <laughs> yeah not a big fan. I, th- uh-huh. I think of it mostly as kind of putting a bandaid on something. Okay. And not addressing so. Okay. So it's like a cosmetic fix. It think? is. It okay. is. Okay. Um so like one of the examples that I often give clients when they come in is if you come in and say I'm an alcoholic and by the end of our work together I would like to stop drinking. Mm. My work is not going to be ke aap char drinks se teen kar dein, teen se do kar dein, do se ek kar dein. Mm. We're going to talk about what makes you want to what are you numbing? 
to begin with. Right. right? Really so get to the like yeah. bottom of it. Yeah. And um, that's longer term work. Yeah. Um, so wo cosmetic fix hai. This yeah. is more like getting down to the root and like heal karna se yeah. solve karna problem. And, and that takes longer and it's an uncertain process. And I think it needs to be said that that requires a lot of resources. Mm-hmm. Emotional, mental, time, um, money. Your job, I realize it's very... Um, just uh, dentistry maybe or sare like as doctors a lot of our work depends on patient compliance mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. if they're complying to mm-hmm. success hoga, right so a lot of your work depends on their your clients compliance as well right yeah and, and for the for the most part I just need them to, to show up uh, okay yeah <laughs> and then if the relationship is, is sufficient enough for them and it takes you know, Kuch long ko saad lag jate hain to get to that point. Kuch mm. long ko teen sessions lagte hain to mm. get to that point. Mm. Um, but the, once that once that happens, then then it, then, then there's change. Acha, out of curiosity, who determines that? Ho gaya kam. You or the client? Uh, so we do it together. The way that okay. I work is I initially ask people to contract for a six week period, which means that we meet every week for the same. Uh, for, for 50 minutes on the same day, same time. Okay. So say if it's Wednesday 2 p.m., it, that'll be their slot for the next six weeks. Mm. If they can commit to that, then on the sixth week, we do a review. Okay. okay. We talk about what worked for them, what mm. didn't work for them, mm. what we could do differently, uh, what, if their goals in therapy have changed. Mm. Um, and then and then with most of my clients, I have an open-ended contract. Okay. So that t- sometimes spans years. I think some uh, there's a client I've seen for over oh. three and a half years. Mm. So, yeah. Okay, that's a lot of time. <laughs> mm. Relationship ho jati hogi. Ah, and, and it is about the relationship. You know, mm. like a lot of research now says that it doesn't matter if you use modality use kare in therapy. Ki. Mm. It's not that CBT is, that psychodynamic is, that person-centered is. It's about the, the agent of change is a therapeutic relationship. Okay. So, as okay. better it will be, as better client-therapist relationship will be, that's where change comes from. Okay, more chances of success. Yeah. Acha. Back to your story. <laughs> <laughs> Back to my story. Uh. Um, so um, I did my master's. Mm. My research was uh, loss and bereavement. Okay. Yeah. So I, I researched um, disenfranchised grief and pregnancy loss. Oh, that's like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> I, I didn't know ki, like you can, you know, look into this specifically. Ki ye bhi hota hai. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh. And I think that um, there's a lot of, well, not a lot, there should be more discourse around how disenfranchised men's grief is around pregnancy loss yes. and how it's seen as kind of a woman's experience. Yes, so, um, I mean, obviously you can't um, trivialize, trivialize to name, but you can't say that equal. Hai. Mm-hmm. Can no, you no. say it's equal? No, I wouldn't say it yes. is. No, I but like, uh, so I know somebody who um, lost their baby mm-hmm. while they were pregnant. Mm-hmm. And um, then she said that, for the longest time, mm-hmm. like, sh- it was about her. And then one day it hit her that, mm-hmm. you know, it was about her husband as mm-hmm. well. And he was just there through her pain and yeah. everything and being there for her. And she said, you know, he never opened up mm. because he was obviously always thinking that, yeah, Am I been pain? allowed to feel grief or not? Yes, because yeah. iska pain kitna zada mm. hai. How can I bring my pain up? Mm-hmm. You know, and obviously people around don't even ask the man. No. Nobody does. Nobody. It's like, oh, matlab uska loss or uska, which is fine, mm. but then uska bhi hai, right? Yeah. So then she said, ke, oh, phir badi mushkil se, like they took a trip and where she like told him to mm. sort of um, talk about it. And that was the first time because of her experience mm-hmm. I realized mm-hmm. this, ke, you know, this is so true. Like, it's such a, it's something that people don't think about. Yeah. So it's interesting that you've uh, brought this yeah, up. Yeah, and I think that even if the, if the you know, the pregnancy is terminated by choice, people, there's the, the discourse around, is there grief around it? Yes, it's not, it's a, so it's not an easy choice no, to make. it's never an easy no. choice to make. Yeah, it's not like, oh, bus. Ah. and happy in life. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, 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 it's always a, a hard decision. Ah. So that's what I researched and I think it really changed my views about uh, loss because I don't know if you, you might be familiar with it but there's a really popular uh, pop psychology way of looking at loss. There are five stages. Hote hai, it's called the Kubler-Ross model. The denial. The yeah, the one? denial, <laughs> anger, you know. Ah. Ah. And I think that's a it's load of crap. It's not as simple as that. <laughs> ah. Grieving is never linear. Never. Okay. Yeah. It hits you out of nowhere. Um, 
you know, you'll be functioning and doing ev- everything normally and it'll hit you out of nowhere. Mm. Um, it's it's a very difficult and nuanced process and it's different for everybody. Mm. Or two people, even if they're in the same situation, will grieve the same way. Mm. So that's kind of what I worked on. Mm. Um, then I came back, started my private practice, transitioning back to, into Islamabad was a challenge also because the last time I had lived here, I was, what, 18? Mm. I didn't live here. Mm. Um, it's also like, a, I don't know if you felt this way, but I definitely felt like having that time away from Islamabad um, and then coming back to people who hadn't had that time away was... Oh my <laughs> God, girl, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's yeah. such a small town, yeah. right? And everybody knows everybody. Mm-hmm. And like, if you don't step out, mm-hmm. you are not growing. No, like you're still stuck in that I am 16 and this is all of us. <laughs> that uh, high school... Drama. I mean, mindset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you've known me, what, about over a decade now? And I'm not the same person I was no. at 15, 16. And I wouldn't want to be the same person I was then. Mm. But I think that people who have never left or have never had the chance to leave, um, they couldn't see me as anything except the person I used to be. Oh, so like they were still... Yeah. And their relationship didn't evolve with me. Like, and I had found a lot of other friends at university and these really meaningful friendships. And, and also, like, if they're not looking at you as a new you mm-hmm. um, and they're stre- still sort of treating you in the same way, mm-hmm. you can't get along because you're like, I where am I at this time? The frequency is out. Absolutely. And I think Haan. that I'm at a point in my life where I'm just like, I can't do these inauthentic friendships. Yes. <laughs> I yes. I will have three friends, but they're all going to know, you know, Very what's... Genuine. Yeah. 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 And that's that's been... It, maybe it happens after university or you have to become your friends. It's like that, I guess. Haan. But for me, to now I've gotten to a point where I just... I can't do it. These performative friendships yeah. are not... Yeah. They don't serve me in any yeah. way. Yeah. So that was hard because mm-hmm. then you're back and there's, you know, uh, finding new friends in Islamabad is hard. Um, it's a difficult city to break into in that sense, even if you've grown up here your whole life. Hmm. Um, but then I kind of settled in. Um, I think you focused a lot on your work as well. I did, uh, I did. But it was hard, no? Family was not here. Family was not here, so I was living, not here. Yeah, no, I was living with my khala. Hmm. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but my plan was never to come back to Islamabad. My plan was to graduate and move to The same khala? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we're living together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, I land in Islamabad because mm. I university I had gone to America for a couple of months. Mm. And I land here and I had sorted out my apartment. I had sorted out everything and it fell through last minute. Okay. In Lahore. So, uh, the girls that I was going to live with offered it to somebody else and I was just like, shit, that means that I'm not going to work. But I think it worked out for the best because mm, I was going to say, do you now think it worked out for the it best? Do, I don't think I had have the patience to deal with the hoary traffic anymore. Early twenties, me I don't, I can't do it. Hmm. And um, also, like, um, yeah, the the work opportunities there would have been different. I the place I interviewed at one place where they first of all said to me, "Yahan to psychodynamic kaam hi nahi karta, to ab kya karengi?" Okay. Dusra will give you 30,000 rupees to work six days a week. Mm-hmm. And uh, it w- I was just like, I'm a pass on that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, because mm-hmm. they would be making like six times that off of my service okay. and, and be giving okay. me that. So yeah. it was not fair. No, yeah. it was, it was worse. Mm-hmm. So I said no. And then I came back and then, you know, I was introduced to a couple of therapists here who really helped and helped me set up. And things just kind of happened after that, one mm-hmm. after the other. I found a space to rent within a week for clients. Uh, and then it just took off. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now you love what you do. I do. Um, I, I did a couple of other things. I delved into, like, uh, recently I did my marriage and family therapy training. Okay. Uh, I did some EMDR, which so is... So, marriage... A, so, like, marriage counseling, yeah, that is. couples counseling. Okay. Yeah, which so is a whole other ball game, and it's fun. So interesting. I love it. It's, <laughs> I think it might be my thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, mm. yeah, so it's been exciting, mm. uh, but I think it's also hard because here there's a community or a network, it's, it's quite challenging. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my story. Mm. Okay, so um, recently um, there was this whole Noor Makadam mm-hmm. incident mm-hmm. and um, there was a lot of conversation on mental health mm-hmm. in there uh, for multiple reasons. A, uh, 
there was a lot of um uh ye ke zahir jafir zahir jafir he was um he was mentally ill pehle ye baat aayi phir ye baat aayi ke like he was schizophrenic ye baat aayi phir ye baat aayi ke he was um not schizophrenic and he was recovered uh and like he had no like he was completely in his senses when the whole thing happened god knows and um and then there was this whole scandal i would say around therapy works that you know um he was working as a psychotherapist mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. as far as i know yes. ha huh? yeah so um and obviously that gave a lot of fuel to people who were already very anti therapy mm-hmm. and then obviously it was also very discouraging for clients for mm-hmm. th- uh, that are like you know that go yeah. to therapy works yeah. and then obviously uh, his mother was also a therapist so there was a lot yeah. going on when it came to mental health yes. right yeah. uh, so i'm sure you hold some opinion on that yes. um so can you break that down for us like how do you feel about this whole thing I think first of all it's just really sad that um abi in, in the last couple of Did years Did you know Noor? Yes, from school. Ah, uh-huh, like yeah. you knew her yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, I remember from the the play that we were all in together. Oh yeah, okay. You were there as yes, well. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh so obviously it was very close to home yes. in so many different yes. ways, you know, like yes. uh And I was very much in touch with her so thoda Achha. time pehle. Okay. So matlab main to soch bhi nahi sakti thi ki like obviously. Yeah, no, yeah. I don't think anybody could have No. And dis- and I remember when I saw the news I was you know I d- I didn't know how to respond and for th- for a couple of weeks after that I was still in this really Fatma, dazed I state I could not like matlab jab ye hua hai and um the thing with being a mother is mm. I say that here is ke you don't get the time mm. to think mm. theek hai so you are just so busy all the time so busy all the time and by the time like i would be done with like my work and my mom stuff mm-hmm. it would be time to sleep and i would just go to sleep right mm-hmm. i did not get the time and space to grieve mm-hmm. even though i wanted to grieve about this mm-hmm. um and i didn't even know that i wanted to grieve about yeah. it but it was affecting me like at the back of my head a lot ke ye ho raha hai um and like it was not until and it just kept getting worse mm-hmm. because <laughs> uh pehle news aaye ke oh he shot her and then he beheaded her um so i was like okay he shot her theek hai chalo quick mm-hmm. you know that's mm-hmm. how you know i just try to make myself mm-hmm. feel better mm-hmm. and then टॉर्चर हुआ दैन आई हर्ड फिर मतलब रोज जो है वो नहीं खबर आई थी दैट शी वाज टॉर्चर्ड एज़ वेल फिर खबर आई के um ke she tried to escape mm-hmm. the day wo wali khabar aayi mm-hmm. na because you know when you know someone mm-hmm. you know what they look like when they speak yeah. when they're happy yeah. when they're sad yeah. so i could play it out a little of what she must have looked like when she was going through that mm-hmm. and that's when i'm sorry no no no, no, no go on and that's when like and jab hua ke she was running and she was trying to save herself and that night i like finally cried mm. i was like cuz i just played it out in my head mm. like i need to cry then i spoke to my husband i was like listen mujhe time nahi milta hai rone ka and i know that this is something that mm-hmm. is affecting me more than it is appears so yeah. cuz i'm just living my life yeah. i'm like yeah i'm like talking about it online yeah. and i'm like going to the vigil and i'm doing all this but it's affecting me mm-hmm. and this all of that is not actually healing me no going to the vigil or talking about it online or the outrage is not healing mm. me yeah, it's wasting my time actually yeah. i could i'd rather just yeah. sit and think and mm. try and like heal yeah. so you know then he encouraged me ki aaj sab chodo mm. life mein mm-hmm. uh, and just mm-hmm. deal with this and, and i think that's a really important point the outrage didn't help healing what do you think helped i i just i just like for me personally mm-hmm. i just needed um i don't know if i've healed <laughs> to yeah, be honest yeah i don't i don't think it's, it's something it's you heal from um, yeah. it's just it's very traumatizing of course um but i i think crying and just being by myself and sort of feeling uh, the pain talking to people who knew her mm. and uh, just talking to them yeah. okay oh we knew noor yes. and like what she was just talking about what she was like yeah. um that helped yeah 
and and grieving is almost always a community you know yes, process yes 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 collective yes so on a more like personal note of missing her mm. helped more than the outrage mm. and the fact that i am a public figure and influencer mm. people put a lot of pressure on mm -hmm. me um to talk about mm -hmm. certain things mm -hmm. and a lot of the times i do feel mm -hmm. about most of the things we want me to talk about mm -hmm. but a lot of the times i don't know how to talk about those things okay so a lot of the times i will say things mm -hmm. that i'm expected to say mm -hmm. and i know that they're right mm -hmm. but it i don't know how to explain this it doesn't feel authentic it feels like the right thing to do it feels not. like the right thing to do and i understand that i have a voice that holds weight but i'm a human as well and i need to deal with stuff so people expect ki acha aaj ek cheez hui hai na aur main 5 minute mein na us cheez ko call out karu ya usko karu mujhe time chahiye hota hai i want to put out an authentic voice i want to put out how i feel about this you know people don't give me that time yeah they will be like so it's performative yeah you know a it lot is. of the times yeah. and it's unfair mm -hmm. because i do want to talk about it mm -hmm. but i want to talk about it authentically yeah. genuinely uh and not talking about it does you know like there's this whole thing uh, um if you are silent you are complicit yeah theek <laughs> hai yeah. and okay sure <laughs> but people need time yeah. and sometimes i may be silent to the world mm -hmm. but you know i'm not silent yeah and and yeah, i think that ways. what you do you know putting your life out like like the like the way you do in a very public way that that must be a lot of pressure i don't think i could ever do it um <laughs> ha it is uh but i but the thing is that i it's been i've been doing this for so long that for me it's very clear mm -hmm. on what like i put out and what i don't mm -hmm. put out so mere liye mushkil nahi hota to mm -hmm. make that difference and mere liye mushkil nahi hota to um not put things why, out why there. do you think that people have that expectation of you do you think it's because again this is just a thought and it might not be how you feel but um because they can then shape their own opinion to model yours they need you they need to know how you know where hamna stands on so this so a couple of things a lot of people like sometimes people will message jo to hai controversial cheeze hoti hain where people don't know where they should stand mm -hmm. a lot of people message and they say we want to know your opinion on this mm -hmm. because people will want to mm -hmm. um decide their position yes decide their position ki maybe i will give them something and they c it can help them um decide uh and a lot of times people are just they feel like their voices are not loud enough mm. mine is louder so they want they will come to me and they will be like please you speak up about mm. this because we want this to be more mm -hmm. uh out there mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just pure judgment <laughs> where they're just like you know dekhte hain ki mm. will she talk about this or will she not because mm. if she doesn't then she is complicit or this or that you know yeah so there's like all of these yeah. different um and and i think going back to the actual sort of thing that we were talking about because it ties into this the with the new thing i think all of us including myself we were also triggered and just functioning on autopilot because and it's not like this is this is the first time it's happened in this country either mm. right mm. it happens all the time it was just so close to home it was like you know woh ek us and them wala divide khatam ho gaya that's not some random two dimensional figure in a village doing this um it was somebody who walked amongst us fatma it just showed that this whole um how our patriarchal system mm -hmm. uh, is not like है तो पेट्रिया की ना हम लोग भी पेट्रिया की में ही रहते हैं हर चीज आप होल्ड भी करते हैं बहुत होल्ड भी हाँ एग्जैक्टली ठीक है लेकिन उसकी जो क्या कहते हैं हम एक्सपेक्ट नहीं करते कि उसकी जो ये वाली चीज़ें हैं जो ये वाला एस्पेक्ट है वो हमारी सोसाइटी हमारे क्लास में होगा just putting it out there very candidly yeah, yeah. um aur hame hota hai ke we know that this is what is for the majority and the masses and we agree that this is we are um not affected uh, so we are privileged mm. but it does not mean ke hamare aage piche jo yeah. log hain unme is tarah ki soch nahi hai aur soch ke alawa i think one of the most um i think big the biggest realization that people had uh and one of my clients said this to me was I realize that my privilege doesn't protect me from anything. 
بیکاز اگر آپ کی کلاس اور پرولیج اس انٹرسیکشن میں بھی یہ چیزیں ہو رہی ہیں اور ہو سکتی ہیں اٹ کوڈ بی اینی بڈی اراؤنڈ اس اینڈ فار دا ٹو ویکس آفٹر دیٹ آئی واز آئی یو نو ان ریٹروسپیکٹ مے بی آئی شوڈنٹ ہیو سین کلائنٹس بٹ آئی تھنک کمنگ یو نو اٹ کنیکٹ ود واٹ آئی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ ارلیئر ان ٹرمس آف سیلف ڈسکلوجر آئی تھنک آئی لیٹ موسٹ آف مائی کلائنٹس نو دیٹ یو نو آئی ایم آلسو افیکٹیڈ بائی دس اینڈ آئی ایم ڈیپلی ڈسٹرب اینڈ آئی ایم مارننگ وی یور کلائنٹس افیکٹیڈ ایوری سنگل ون آف دیم ویمن only there was only one man who said to me what can i do differently what can i do to make women around me feel safe mm-hmm. uh, but me- that's that's also what i'm saying i think the the burden and the distress and the anxiety and the unsafety women have carried yes um it and men are largely unaffected by it i did i just feel like that's something they can't feel because they haven't experienced um the cat calling no. or the walking like in your street and feeling extremely yeah. unsafe or, or kuch bhi nahi but they they cannot wrap their heads around the level of unsafety aap jitne marzi privileged ho jo marzi ho it, it's it's just this constant sense of unsafety and also uh, fatma like um so i spoke to like a lot of um men mm-hmm. around in my life mm-hmm. and um I thought it was my responsibility because if they're not feeling or understanding then they need to be made to mm-hmm. understand. Uh I lost my point. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. No, you spoke to a lot of men. Yeah, I spoke to them and um the thing was wh- they, they a lot of them had this wo ke yaar ye jo banda tha ek special case tha. Mm. Get it? Mm. Ye hum uh, aise nahi ha uh, hum nahi ho sakte. And then I was like listen like the problem is which is so odd by the way. Mm-hmm. I'll come to that. Mm-hmm. The problem is that we have met and interacted with men and boys mm-hmm. and we realized yes. that streak that was in them. Yes. That could have just been a few, like, what do they call it? What do they call it, man? You know what? Since I've become a mom. That's okay. <laughs> Take your Fatma, time. I can't even <laughs> form like proper sentences. That's okay. I get what you mean. Like it, it, they have the potential in them to turn yes, into like that. It's about a few turn of events yeah. that w- could have led up to yeah. something similar. Yes. Not saying exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. But like could have led up to that just because of the way that they were, mm-hmm. you know, and the thoughts that they have. Yeah. Um, and when this happened, mm-hmm. a lot of us women were suddenly like, we've seen this street yeah. we know this street yeah. we know people like yeah. this yeah you know we got out of it we yeah. were lucky yeah but it yeah. was a sudden realization yeah. how it could have happened to and us and you and i had a conversation just after that yes, right yes, and i yes. think that all of us were examining all of the relationships around us and one of the things that you and i talked about was growing up we didn't have the vocabulary that we do now Uh, we we didn't know ke ye toxic hai ye patriarchal hai ye violence hai ye coercion hai mm-hmm. uh we have we have that vocabulary now um, and so many times when we went felt uncomfortable yeah. and um abused yeah and uh, you know but we and gaslit but we just felt something but yeah. we didn't know what it was yeah. and how to like get out of it or follow through with it and sort of like shut our intuition down and i don't think okay. this is a women problem i think this is a systemic problem ke mm. women's kind of distress is not attended to enough okay um and you know and and again patriarchy right that's I'm that's so sorry about the flies that's okay <laughs> don't nothing don't i've never seen before <laughs> um, they ended up here ke it is a systemic problem it's patriarchy and and mental illness bhi vacuum any exist karti you know matlab uh, agar koi bimar bhi hai koi unwell bhi hai there are systems in place there are things that you can do the fact that we are so deeply socialized to to be okay with and yeah. and accept violence and aggression mm. that 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 is problematic mm. um and maybe things wouldn't have gotten to the point that they did if different things were done differently there's also this um mindset that we have that even i had i'll admit um ke it's we can fix them yeah the men <laughs> haven't we all been there <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. like there was a lot of times i was like i knew the problems yeah. and i was like you know like i can fix this i can make it better i am that like sweet angel woman that will change the man yeah. you know but that leads to all of this yeah, and i don't like think it's just you i think that that's just again something we're socialized to do in lots of ways it's a key individual things be hoti hain that play into it 
but it's um it's it's like a woman's like even when this whole thing was happening um i i heard lots of people say we should raise you know we should raise better sons pay kyun phir aurton pe responsibility for men's behavior actually even i said that matlab <laughs> kyun but but then later my mom said this to me ki kyun ha matlab why did you say this <laughs> i did, i didn't know you had said no, it no i said this and she said ke um baat theek hai but tum phir also ke par dal rahi ho na and then she made a status about it and i was <laughs> like okay i'm <"Mama>, sorry <laughs> i can imagine her calling you out <laughs> yeah. and so she was like you know don't put the responsibility no. on women again no. and, it's, and it's not it, it was fair and honestly like there was this thing about okay men should just listen baat usse bahut aage ja chuki i think it's about accountability now mm-hmm. i think yes. men need to be accountable for what they do they need yes. to hold other men accountable for what they for what they do mm-hmm. um and it, we're well past that point of okay sir if listen to women's experience mm-hmm. um I, i don't think that's going to suffice anymore mm-hmm. so it's been it's been really difficult i think for everybody um and we're still reeling from the aftershocks mm-hmm. of this whole thing mm-hmm. um Yeah. yeah we digressed yes uh, <laughs> but like um i wanted to ask you i asked you about like the whole mental illness and therapy aspect of it there was so much to this mm-hmm. to discuss mm-hmm. uh, and like we hadn't gotten to do that mm-hmm. so i'm glad we spoke of that as well but i wanted your opinion on the whole therapy mental illness aspect of okay. it so this conversation is getting super interesting and we still have a lot to talk about um but because it's getting very long i'd like to break this conversation here and we will continue in the next episode so i will be again here with fatma hussain uh, to talk further about a lot of other things so stay tuned and i'll see you again next time allah hafiz